Hello and welcome to Reading Corner with Kyle. I'm Kyle and I'm from Chattanooga Football Club and today I'm going to read you a story called Sandy Circus. So let's get started. There once was an artist named Alexander Calder, only he didn't call himself Alexander and he didn't call the things he made art. Everyone called him Sandy. He had been making his objects since he was a kid. Sandy's mother was a painter, his father was a sculptor. Even though they moved from Pennsylvania to Arizona to California to New York and back to California, his parents always made sure Sandy had a workshop and tools. So here we see Sandy, his mom painting, and his dad sculpting. He made his friends toys and jewelry from scraps of wood, leather, and wire he would pick up off the street. Sandy built his sister Peggy a castle for her doll, complete with a moat. He and Peggy made toy animals and played circus in the workshop. So here's Sandy grabbing all this stuff from the street and from trash bins and wherever you could find it. And these are the things he would build for his sister and friends. Even though Sandy loved creating things, he didn't always want to be an artist. He went to college and learned more about making things by studying to be an engineer. Sandy had different jobs, but never really liked any of them. Then he worked as a fireman in the boiler room of his ship. One night, he was sleeping up on deck, sailing between San Francisco and New York. When he woke, he was awestruck. On one side of the ship was a fiery red sunrise. On the other, the full moon shone like a silver coin. The sight made Sandy want to go to art school, and he did. So this is the scene that changed Sandy's life. The sun on one side and the moon on the other. And there he is on the ship. Artists need to work. A newspaper hired Sandy to draw the Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey Circus. For two weeks, day and night, he went to the stadium drawing as many different parts of the circus as he could. He loved sketching the elephants, the flying trapeze, the lion tamer, and the dancers. Sandy sat in different parts of the theater to see from up high, down low, off to the side. So here we see the trapeze swinger, some other people, and that is Lion and the Tamer who made it out alive. And this is Sandy sketching it all. The next year, 1926, he decided to go to Paris. Why Paris? Because that city was alive with art. And Sandy said, in Paris, it's a compliment to be called crazy. Sandy rode through the streets of Paris on his orange bicycle. He carried a roll of wire around his shoulder and a pair of pliers in his pocket. Bienvenue à Paris. Welcome to Paris. Um, these are all the artists and here is Sandy on his orange bicycle with the wire and I'm assuming there are some pliers in the pocket and a dog. When Sandy bumped into a friend, out came the wire and pliers. He would twist and bend and curl while he chatted. And before they said adieu, Sandy would give his friend a gift. Voila, a small portrait of the person made of wire. So here we see one of his creations. He uh, made a portrait of this man with the mustache and all, big fan and the top hat. 
And there he is. One day, Sandy made a little wire lion. He built a colorful cage for the lion. Of course, since the lion was a wild animal, it needed a tamer. So Sandy made him too. Then he made high wire walkers and a high wire for them to walk on and a safety net in case they should fall and a flying trapeze and a red stage. Sandy started to see a whole circus come to life before his eyes. Here we have the, one of his little creations, the lion and the tamer with his cage and the trapeze swingers over the safety net. Then he really got going. His huge hands worked with tiny pieces of wire, cork, cloth, buttons, yarn, string, leather, paper, and bits of wood. He twisted and shaped and curled and cut and carved until Sandy was ready to put on a big top circus show. His circus filled two suitcases, click, click. Sandy set up the stage with his animals and performers wherever and whenever he could. He went back and forth, back and forth, from Paris to New York, those suitcases always along for the ride. During one stay in New York, Sandy made more animals and acrobats. His circus grew to fill five suitcases. When it was showtime, out came the suitcases, click, click, click. Click, click. So here's Sandy going back and forth from Paris to New York, all with his suitcases. A friend wound up the gramophone to start the music. Sandy boomed a greeting to his audience in the voice of his wire ringmaster, Monsieur Loyal, announcing the performance was about to begin. On his knees, this bear of a man worked the springs and strings and levers of his clever creations, making them leap, run, and dance. Hear the whistle blow, horns blare, see the flying flipolinus flip, the lion roars, the lion tamer tames, seals bark, tossing a ball from nose to nose. Rigolo, the strong man, bends to his toes and raises a huge barbell high above his head, showing off for his beloved bearded lady. Horses gallop, birds flutter, dogs dance on whirly twirly legs. Cativo, the clown, plays tricks on his fellow performers. He dangerously distracts the axe thrower just as he hurls his axe at the wire girl. Oh no, injury under the big top, but never fear, help is on the way. Sirens wail, two wire rescue workers race in to carry the girl off on a teeny tiny stretcher. Sometimes the show went on for hours. There were chariot races and bucking broncos, a belly dancer, camel and kangaroo, Sandy crawled around on his hands and knees, arranging his wire animals and circus folk, setting them in motion to perform for the crowd. After the grand finale, he brought them all back for a bow. Encore, encore. The crowd laughed and clapped and cheered for more. Word spread throughout Paris and New York. Everyone wanted to see Sandy's circus. They loved how full of joy and fun it was. They loved how Sandy's work was always in motion. People said he has discovered in playing a new world. His art has the force of the ocean. Here's everyone raving about how good his circus is.
Sandy delighted in crafting things that moved. He made new kinds of art, hanging his shapes up, connecting pieces to each other with wire, and letting the air drift and spin them into motion. In doing so, he turned ordinary objects into extraordinary art and invented the very first mobiles. And it all started with Sandy's magical movable circus. And that's it. That's the end of the story. A very happy ending for Sandy and his circus. So I hope wherever you are, you guys are safe and enjoying this quarantine. I hope like Sandy, you may make something new. Um, you may find a new world in playing and I hope you guys are all safe. Have fun. Au revoir.